All right, gang, welcome back to the hideout. You've made it just in time for another episode of, oh my God, when is this guy gonna get to the outer wilds? I'm sorry it took so long to get this episode out to you lot. I smashed my hand when I ga ga gamer slammed. Um, I tried recording earlier and my camera died, but basically we woke up, looked through the book pile, and I saw that there was a conceptualization check. So Soft I think that's what I'm gearing up to do. Fantastic and detect Intelligence, yeah? Okay, I can, uh, I feel like I might have a, I might have two skill points, actually. Just level this up anyhow. Everybody will be dancing if Soft you're doing covers, it right. Serialized, fantastic, 42%. And detective stories. Born to be a I gotta tell you, there's one thing I like. It's, uh, it's Boomer Jams, you know? W what is that? Classic rock? Is that the actual name of the genre, dude? I'd be back home. My dad used to shove me in the library every day after school. And on, when he'd come pick me up, like a couple hours later, he'd always be listening to the radio. And sometimes he was playing Delilah. Delilah. And Delilah was this like radio show where like, it was this lady with this like ultra smooth voice and people would call Lane about like how they're feeling or like their relationship problem or whatever. And Delilah would pick out a song for them. It was either Animal that Adventures, or- uh, A magazine for electrical engineering and an oh. international thriller. It was either that or- um, like Erotica and some historical novels from this the is century past. Watercolors on Sirius XM, listening to smooth jazz, or boomer anthems. Like, uh, what's that song? What's that song? Second Son or something like that? I don't know, man. It ain't me! You know, so that my music taste is defined by old white people. It is what it is. Give me this. Not that you Dime. can tell. This is a digest of someone who's dead bored. Most of it is for entertainment purposes. Fittingly, right next to the radiola on the floor. Okay, nothing is out of the ordinary Maybe for real. Is old fashioned. There's a nude mag. Is that an a old cylindrical scope? generator is nested above the ammo lift with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. Bro has electricity is crazy. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. We are like incredibly lucky to pull up here when this person was not in. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell. So you guys ever feel like drinking gas cooling? There's a red starter switch well, on don't the do side that. of the cylinder and a start rope on it the just, other it side. It just does look the yummy. Lieutenant flicks the switch. It feel, I feel like part of my brain is like, yeah, gasoline would probably taste like thick Coke. You guys know about thick water? Yeah, they got thick water for people who can't swallow. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The I want thick Coke. Like an old walls. Before settling down. Jesus, the all that smoke indoors, man. The tank is far from full, but there should be enough inside to keep it going for a day. Where do the wires lead? Downstairs, somewhere. I don't like that noise. Oh, they have the uh, communist postal. So if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, every time I go to sleep from now on, I'll see Dolores Day. My ex wife. I don't want to talk about it. People are like, "Yo, Anki." You see a small metal door nested inside a larger one, a heavy steel blast door. There is a conventional keyhole above the handle. It's very small. How do we open this? Maybe this is one of the doors we don't open. He's right. It would be better to open its big brother. A powerful engine hangs under the ceiling. It must control the blast door. Hmm. I think there's a console just southeast. Let's look around. Getting the blast door open seems like the best plan. Okay. I'm sure there's a check I could do to, uh, you know, smash something, but I don't feel like doing that right now. Um, people are saying, damn, I'm glad um, you're, you're gamer smashing skipped past the worst of the dialogue so i i looked through frame by frame uh yeah you poverty stricken fuck that was a good one dude yeah i think i might have screamed it's all right 
you guys are telling me the worst is over, so I'll take your word for it. But if the worst isn't over and I go catatonic for a couple of days again, just know that I'm reporting you guys. I'm going to put you guys on the name of the list, on the list of that name. Fuck me, Jesus, dude. On that list with the names that weren't to that island, I'm putting you guys on it. Green paint flakes off the monoblock aluminum cabinet. There are rows of switches on the front panel, a frequency band, even a keyboard. What's this then? The console of an antique computation device. The generator upstairs with wires coming out. Determine it here. I think, yes. Let's see. That one. The emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Jeez, man. This little detail they have of the, um, the, like, sand and dust falling. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. No, it's more than that. There's something there waiting. Waiting? After you. <laughs> What's there? I don't know. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. Don't be. I have a gun. All right. I know. It was not easy to acquire. <laughs> I right, let me equip the gun because people people yelled at me. They're like, "Didn't you get a warning to keep your fucking gun, Sinclair?" And I'm like, "Yes, yes, I did." Born to be why? Anyways, I was saying that little detail with the sand. They didn't need to add that. I know a, a tiny little bit about 3D, and walk slow. It might be dangerous. It's the guy, right? I know a tiny little bit about 3D, and the um, the small particle effects, at least in my experience, can be a real bitch. So they could have very easily skipped out on that. But this game, a fire pit. So what Shivers told me. This game is about the details in it. There's the fire pit. Hey, man. An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. Look, man. Then spits it out into the extinguished. Alright, I thought he was gonna spit on me. It's like, look, I don't. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Is he Samarin? Unclouded by cataracts. Is it his eyesight is literally shy. the Japanese deserter that I was talking about? He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. That's an amazing voice. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. Nice gun you got there, mate. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. Do I really like his voice? Is that a Bel Marav? It's a Triangong 446. Still a 446 though. Southeast Samarin made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No but the bullet is also that of a 446, that right? Springs to mind. A Samarin rifle. How did you get hold of one? Kim. It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. You heard me. It's good now, like chalk, white from the ball. Uh, I don't see this guy putting the gun down. I'll ask him anyway. Lieutenant pulls his pistol from the holster. Okay, man, chill. You are a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding. The words, I am an enemy commander. Sound cold as iron from your lungs. The old man still hugs his gun. And what rank would that be, dog? LTDY, buddy. A big wheel of the 4th Regiment of the Pederast Army. <sighs> to hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. Mm. It's out of bullets. Like an amputated limb in the sand. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. The future 
teaches you to be alone. Real. Real and true. That's what I've learned anyway. The present. The present to be afraid and cold. Real music. It's La Reva Cholière, you shit licking bougie dog. Chanson de soldat of the black and whites. You need to address that remark. The job of a bougie dog. Fuck it, understand. You don't understand anything. I'll pick up the gun. Follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. Hieroglyphs, eh? On the butt, you see Vespertine writing burnt into the wood. Triangle, 4.46 millimeter. That's what I'm saying. It's still a 446. The right type and the right calibre. He's liking this. No one said it has to be Ben Agrave. We were just guessing. From ballistics, it could easily have been a triangle, too. It doesn't matter if it was made in Shanty Shanty. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It can be used against him to get a confession in time. Who are you, man? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. <sighs> Bev of the day. Arizona RX Energy Herbal Tonic. Not sponsored by Arizona. I'm just a big Arizona guy. What does this taste like? It's like I feel like I need to shut the fuck up. Just for a little while. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. Hmm. The commune of Revachol? Do you mean the ICM? Your uh, holdover from the... From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia, the Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07, trained in the Ecole de Control Orion, and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. Mm. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. No. I've been on other islands too. Mm. I was in a resurrection until they turned it into a spa. In a spa is crazy. Then I was on E48. A nameless sound until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. What's this place then? It's not an island, Dwat. It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. Wait, it was a commune, but it had a king? Retrofitted the fort with an Am I misunderstanding something? ...against an airborne landing against the whole world. 
coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You're one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Hey man, I'm not one of sure them. Sure you are. You're our CM. Answer me. Who calls an operation against 50 million people? Death blow. Murderers. You don't know. You haven't seen it. Iblis, the black-eyed angel. Shaitan Ahura, the darkened one. You're with the RCM. The coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. A so-called Lieutenant W. Freighter. Let's. You represent the Moralist International. The enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary. Le Parti Communiste dans le monde. <coughs> Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> a spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. I mean, I would rather just leave old boy to his devices. I just got to find out if he's a murderer. No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. Okay, like dude. you belong to the moralist party. It was hard in the tens. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. Hmm. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martin Martin and Cold City, City were turned to dust. To dust. But Jamrock, Fuburg, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsov coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. Mm. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon so they there were a bunch of, like, small groups of people who escaped. At night. I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. Hmm. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... Why don't you? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. It's hard for me to, um... Sort of like grok or understand this sort of like feeling or sentiment. I think a lot about what am I willing to do? Like, what hill am I willing to die on? Because if I'm being honest, like, we're in a we're in a pretty... You know, they say the world wars were only named world wars after the fact, you know? And we're, we're kind of cooking right now. Not in a good way. And there's so much shit going on, and I feel genuinely, like, helpless. There's so many... And I know that that's, like, a... Feeling, like, hopeless or feeling like you can't really make any change is quote-unquote what they want or is good for quote-unquote them you know like in america at least so i've mentioned like my home country fought for its independence 60 years ago right um so there's still traces of that and there still were traces of that when i when i was growing up right when i was growing up it was only like 40 i think years ago that that was happening so it's still very present so the attitudes of the people the the scars on the land the repercussions in, in, in the governments, you know, I mean, so I've, I've seen and experienced this sort of thing. And then to be in America and to see like how far along and how cooked it all is. And then to look and it's like, I don't know how to, what color articulate, like 
how fucking cooked like, everything is. It's fucked. And I feel like, I kind of feel like this. Not that I'm any better, but like, they're, they're too tired after work to do anything, you know? Yeah, they're going to sit on the couch and watch the Super Bowl and order some McDonald's, you know? And I can't be mad at him for it, you know? It is what it is. He does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting, drinking, laughing. Right. So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elma Graves, right? I know. So you've been there. That's him? That's his stash? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Mm. Elma scrounging on others. Those McGraves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. The propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. I was just 16 years old. 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. Being drafted at For a second, 15, 16. I doubted the irreducible laws. I know he said he's volunteered, but I'm going to go to war at that age anyway is crazy. What were you doing when you were 15? I think I was whacking it to blue skinned girls. On hentai haven. You know what I mean? Fuck. A second is all it took for reaction to take hold. Petty bourgeois terror. It's in all men. May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky, and it looked like, like it formed the clouds, storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic, the mm. combined might of international capital. All at once, all mm. the greed and Jeez, terror man. in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. Huddled on the floor. The artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon. But I knew. I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. A terrible shame still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. Now, I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened at the ordinance all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. <laughs> Airships. I climbed out into hell the landing was complete the chain was submerged i had to swim back the fortress was half submerged too shattered they'd all drowned in the lower levels or got torn to shreds above the anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned so had i hmm. i left them without so he got lucky direction it was real I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Some kind of great terror. Worse than you've ever seen. The mask of humanity fall from capital. 
It has to take it off to kill everyone, everything you love, all the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know that the bourgeois are not human. I had to. I had to fight it. I had to never stop. I often wonder about what is it that happens when you get uber rich that makes you think like life must be so, so good when you're super rich that you're like, yeah, actually, I don't care about everybody beneath me anymore. You know what I mean? I can't imagine having a million dollars and not doing everything I can to at least feed or house the people that I can. My ultimate, ultimate, ultimate dream is if I ever became like a gajillionaire, I would start like a... Um, like a chain of uh, of like like smaller shelters, like small little like uh, housing places for houseless people that would give them an address at the very because you can't get a job without an address, you know what I mean, or without a phone or blah blah blah. So just like the the basic essentials, you know, for the people that that can be helped and just need a little bit of help getting up, um, and then try to see if I could fund some programs for like. Med uh, medical attention and care and counseling for the people that have some other shit going on, you know? And it would be, I, I honestly, I don't think I even need a gajillion dollars to do that, you know? And I think I could do that and, and, and still have enough money left over to be as shitty as I want. I'm not at all interested in any cars or jewelry or fancy clothes or whatever at all. But who knows, maybe you get up there and, and maybe it's just that fucking good, you know? So when he says like, the bourgeois are not human. That strikes that chord within me where I'm like, I'm not some good guy. I'm pretty, what color? I'm pretty like, somebody put on the Shadow the Hedgehog music. I'm a pretty cold, pretty like ruthless person at the end of the day. When it comes down to it, I've got some pretty nasty, like angry slivers of thoughts in my mind about my fellow man. But you know, when push comes to shove, when it really comes down to it, you know, even if it was just completely selfish, at the end of the day, the math works out so that if everybody around me is doing well, I'll do better. So, yeah, I'm going to help people, you know what I mean? But to not even have that much, it's hard for me to imagine somebody who thinks that way as also being a person. You feel me? How does anyone survive? I steal supplies, vegetables, I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. <coughs> How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. DRCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. I have them. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... I don't even know what. Inferno? I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult, mentally, to live in isolation. It sure does. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins glimmering in the dark like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? 43 years and 10 months. <laughs> That's the length of my entire life. It's too long. It's not how a human being should live. <clears throat> but I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. He nods. But he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? 
Bro, surviving, like... Hiding, fishing, waiting. Where the afternoon grows late, on Rue de saint Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Two police officers step out of the Whirling in Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vicmer inspects a series of burnt black letters splashed across the plaza mosaic. What did it say? One day I'll return to your side? Patrol officer Judith Minow points west. The fishing village. She glances at her watch. We meet in 15 minutes. It's a 10 minute walk. Hey, stay out of my fishing village, man. The officers go. Leaving behind the writing, yeah. still smoldering. One day, it says, I will return to your side. I don't want to hear it. No more promises. Always waiting for her to return. Lover of Achelier. Her who? Girl, child, revolution. I sincerely believe that capital is too powerful. I really believe that. Let's give the old man some hope, though. It won't. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for a revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore, however hard I try, whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession would lighten the load. Yes, what? To get things going again? Fan the flame? Is that... oh, really? There is no flame to fan. There is nothing left of the world, of our dreams. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. Composure. I ain't going. I put on the fuck the world jacket because I wonder if he'd have anything to say Millions about that. Of capital. What do you want? Fail. What oh, thank you God. This gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild, he's surprisingly okay. Indeed, he speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid, keen even, not senile. Is it some kind of substance damage? Like he's addicted to something? Not only the painkillers he's clearly on. No. I won't be stuffed full of shit like the rest of this city. It's not a downer. Rather, an upper. Judging by his snaps. I don't know what that is. Like some kind of decadent rock star. No, I'm not okay. I shit blood, and I'm surrounded by insane people. Real. There it is again. Erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. Could it be a symptom of overdosing on something? Something even you have not tried? Keep your eyes peeled. Not gunpowder. I've used it for killing people. Here we go. A trail of blood. The lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. 
During or after the war? Both. There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So did he just, um... Because I did see a giant telescope in there. Does he just have, like, an ideological whatever against the... The people in the... Como se dice? Ceramic armor and just saw his opportunity to take one out. So his continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay. Okay. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. Get personal. I think he doesn't think like... I think he doesn't think the fighting has stopped, right? I don't want to tell you anything. And why did you think that was a good idea? Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> I was thinking about, uh, I had a girl over and she was asleep and I was thinking about um, that line of dialogue that Shivers, not Shivers, Suggestion said and I was like, bro, put me in front of a firing squad. I can't believe I failed you. The who now? Oh, yes. That one. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? I am a son of a welder. And an officer of the commune of Revachal. <laughs> I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Tear into him. Pile it on him. Everything you got on him. The more, the better. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Wait, here it comes. The goddamn Maybells. The dried Maybells on Clasio's roof. Who cares? There were Maybells in the grass when you got here. The white and flowers? On Clasio's balcony. Is this a coincidence? Wait, don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust in the secret space behind Clasio's bedroom. Now, they're gonna come up. You got it. Remember, the boot prints were like no modern soul. Maybe don't beat yourself anymore, though. You're not immortal. Nothing else comes up. You see the loop? I'm sorry. This didn't do anything. Usually hurting yourself does. Officer, a word? Yeah, what's up, Kim? I think we may have. From nothing to this in a day. This is good, Lieutenant Yefreiter. We just need a confession first and then maybe a solid motive later. Ballistics. Let him cook here for a minute or two. We can have another look around the island for a sniper's nest. I think we should check out the post. It doesn't have to hold in court. Just establish a line of sight and he'll do. Remember. He wants to tell us, but he doesn't want to help us. It needs to look like we already have everything. Is that the case? There is palpable excitement in his tone. He likes him for this. A lot. But there's something more, too. What? He thinks the deserter has more than just this case in him. 44 years here. Oh, yes. And he hasn't spoken to anybody in a long time. Okay. We need to find a sniper's nest? All right. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. Sniper's nest? Double embrasures firing slits like two eyes in the wall this looks like a good place to aim from a single person mattress modern civilian use brand name marjorie there's a fuel stain on the cover along with cigarette burns and an empty can of beans on the ground next to it filled to the brim with cigarette butts that embrasure what can you see through it there's a firing slit in the wall in front of you 
like a little window. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation. A tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting, one kilometer across the water. A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire, capeside apartments, Rue de saint Lane, 33. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags, Rue de the box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. You see a small fleck of white on the rooftop. Damn. The upstairs window of Clasia's room. Hey, the man. Reflecting light. <laughs> what was his name? Lely? Lely? Lely caught a stray, dude. Lely really wasn't even alive when all this shit went down. Old man had beef with what Lely represented. Lely had no clue. Lely just wanted to get his little pickle Rick wet. What? Do you have a line of sight to the window? Yeah. I can see it. Through the scope of a rifle. The shooter would be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger, on a calm day like this. I think we have it. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Nothing mm. pointed here. Many leads pointed elsewhere. Yeah. He looks north. Then again, his face twitches. How do your face twitch, Kim? Let's talk to old boy right quick. I feel a little bit, if it is the old man that did it, I feel a little bit unsatisfied. I guess I'll think about it and talk about it later. Hey man. Minions of capital. What do you want? Petty bourgeois law. <laughs> this is all you care about, right? The only thing in the world for you types. A drop of blood in the saliva. Tear into him again. Pile it on him. I saw you poking around there. Looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long range rifle in your possession. You have been here a long time, Mr. Dross. Too long. You need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He might just feel guilty for um, deserting his crew. And if he says like, well, at least I killed one of them. You know what I mean? What color? He can now say at least I killed one of them. Because it's a sniper's nest, you stupid. Radio Gosh is right. You have worms in your brain. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly. Nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year too? The spring is coming. No. It's already here. Wash the filth away. They blossom on the islets before we fertilize them with our blood. Hazorexion was snow white in May before they ruined it. South, the Bay of Martinez is dotted with little freckles of islets turning green with white flowers in white snow. The coast, too. Before they I saw a thread on Reddit. It said it was a what is the with I was very careful about browsing it. Trash it said what is a video game story that you believe absolutely must with. be experienced? And I saw Disco Elysium and Outer Wilds in there, and that was all I needed to hear as a guy word. I didn't look in the thread. I just scrolled through just to see if those names were in there. So I'll take you guys' word for it. You must get around a lot to stay undetected all these years. Do you know any secret paths, pinball workshops? I may. Classy with the victim. There is a small tremble. Looks like a smile. A crooked smile. Yet isn't quite voluntary. He's about to burst. Almost. But you need one more. 
Just one. Or maybe two. Everything is brands with you individualists. Who cares what brand my shoes are? Sansa. Show me the souls, please, Mr. Doras. Fucking imbecile. The maker is called Sensory. You see their V-shaped logo, but can't make out the size. These are not the unusual horizontal patterned souls you saw in the dust on the really? floor of the hidden room. They do, however, seem to be about the same size. Was it not him The then? size fits, but not the soul. Drama. Give it to me, please. Simpler? No. This is another the lieutenant. Rick. What are you doing? He's thinking. Not now. Stop yourself. People change shoes, detective. It was you. You were there, weren't you? Crawling and whirling in rags. What were you doing? Some kind of reconnaissance? Preparing the scene? Listening in on her? Trying to rack your brains. You're desperate to report something back to your masters. They must have really loved that dead fuck. The old man stares at his own prints in the ash around the fire. Silence suddenly, some strange process within him. A gush of wind. Seagulls in the distance. You've almost got him. Just the last little push. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around. It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistol. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons, eh? <laughs> Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. So he saw you? Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? 4.46 jacketed ammunition. Modified for range. We have it. This is it. Good. I don't... I'm not... I don't... I'm not satisfied. This feels good, doesn't it? It doesn't. Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. I... I I'm not... Murder. You know who he was. A coalition trained murderer. Armored and armed. He wasn't human. The blunt end of a hammer. Dripping with blood. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it. Us to the ground. Moaning with joy. You hounds get so thorough when a company trained killer dies. I haven't seen you on this coast Is that a confession? For I'm not. Years. You know, maybe I should have killed one sooner. Got your attention. Now you stop beating druggies and prostitutes in your basement. Now you come to investigate. Not when they die by the hundreds. Oh, the inhumanity. One paramilitary less in Revachal. The lieutenant raises his right arm to hush you. Hush. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. While the lieutenant listens, holding his breath. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them, in phase, and I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth. I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore. I did. I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face. And his dick still in her. Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dross, are you aware you're confessing to murder? Yes. And you were looking at them? The victim and a young woman. Having sex through the scope of your rifle that night before you shot him? 
The old man nods. Why? Because that's what they were doing. The motive. This is where the motive is going to come from. You can coax it out of him. The lieutenant's preparing the ground. <laughs> I don't understand. Do you, detective? I don't... I'm always looking. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. I mean, if he's always looking, then he's living vicariously through them. I guess he can participate. I guess it's like TV, or he can like participate in their lives, sort of. You know. Helps him see all the shit. And if you don't like it, click. Then you pull the trigger. Yes. Think of it as a <laughs> form of critique. My thinking right now is that I guess it's as good of a reason for killing him as as there could have been. There, it's as good as an, an answer as anything else there could have been. Um, it's not explosive. It's not dramatic. Um, in my mind, I'm thinking something like it's an old man's answer to the call of the void. If you know what I mean. I'm trying to be brand friendly. God damn it. Um, he wants to be taken out. And that's the real reason. I, I think he's just tired of living on this island and he, he wants to die. So he's guilty. He feels guilty about um, deserting his crew. So at least he can die saying he took some out. We've got him going. Connect every little piece now. Start with when he first saw him. It will give him a chance to ramble. Three weeks ago, when the rich hag came in on her galley, her honor guard came in tow. Wrinkled up whore. Black sexual morals are a bourgeois ploy. <laughs> As to better So don't you sermonize me, you racist shithole. It's still bourgeois when the boy Some strange glandular process takes place in him, and anger too. <clears throat> they moved into a deserted apartment above the roundabout. Radio equipment out for all to see. Reactionary radio playing, sloppy and drunk. I've seen their kind during the landing. Those Occidental and Mest Phalangs weren't conscripts. Boys like us. They're barely alive. They like to kill while they're on their drugs. After the landing, in the burning years, I would take shots at them. End them. The worst ones, if I had a bullet to spare. I could see they've returned now to show their real face. The face they don't dare show their bourgeois voters back on Mundi with their families and polyester clothes. A tragic comedy. Druggies, prostitutes, and rentiers. A strange little engine seems to fire up in him again. It straightens his back. Detest pushes the cobwebs out of his eyes, pushes the melancholy aside. He relishes it. Specifically, the whole city is a charnel house, stripped clean and draped in neon. The Martinez. Martinez is the worst. Because of the racists, everyone is a racist in Martinez. Really? It's their favorite thing to do in the whole world listening to race-themed radio shows in the ruins, in their lorries. Hmm. Pump full of steroids and Radio Revachal 92. Race this, race that. It's all sanctioned by that social democratic union and the farce of a social democrat who runs it. Yes, the fly lava in his container. Hmm. He led some nihilist Ever advertising Claire? yuppies mm. erect a statue of Philippe III, a syphilitic murderer on the town square, to spit on the working class. Not since the serfs of ancient Pericarnassus has history produced a more inert social class than the Martinez proletariat. The rest of Revachal at least pretends to rebuild. 
these people, these people still, still live, in, live ruins. in ruins. Okay. Intense, like animals, like those boom boom morons on the ice. A pity they didn't drown in that tent of theirs. The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. Ah, uh, he died too. Racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins too. Every morning he's there. While the parasites he fought to protect are off in Ozon, or Koyam Moran, or some other Jesus. island they built their palaces on. Feeding on drugs and having sex with their own children. That's all the rich really want. Oh my sex god. With their own children. Throughout history, even the royal bloodline of the suzerain. It's all just an excuse for them to have sordid sex. At least that old cunt Frisell is now dead. We did good when we pushed him under that horse car. If only in the 30s, those disco whores. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center. Leave it only a nonsensical sputter. Glad. It's all gone. Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. <laughs> Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out. Soothed in the arms of a young woman. All right. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. This sort of, um... You know, nihilism is really a meme. Nietzsche himself, at the end of it all, was, was not a nihilist. Nihilism is very much a, like, um, in my opinion, at least. I just got into philosophy and I'm 14. You know what I mean? I really believe that. But, that all being said, this sort of a uh, nihilistic, defeated, sort of like um, passive anger and, like, hatred and, and vitriol and, you know, bitterness, like, I can't blame him. And I can't say that I don't, what color, I don't feel some of that at least you know that's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head now that i think of it i wasn't aiming for his mouth i wanted his brains to spill out on her but you can't have everything this man has seen past her like you did and now he longs to see her covered in blood to punish her she practically breastfed that man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Like, what can you... You know what I mean? I, I do... I would, I'm not satisfied with why he would be so fixated on Colossia. Um, when I say I'm not satisfied, I don't, I don't mean that I don't think it's, like, reasonable or good or whatever. I wish to know more as to why he's so... But I mean, this is a pretty, this happens, you know, dudes being um, fixated on or obsessed with or like jealous about women that they really have nothing to do with. Seeing it as some sort of, uh, I don't want to say incel rage, but seeing it as a sort of like representative for the state of quote unquote society, you know. You stare at them too. In your mind, her innocent stain still turns to leaf. Airport bag in hand, silks flowing in her wake. See you tomorrow, Harry. Her voice rings in the evening air, burning. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say. The old man raises his gaze. Something glimmers in the corner of his black eye. A bitter taste on his tongue. How long have you been watching her? 
since she came to Martinez. I saw her sneaking in the reeds early in the morning behind the fell building. It was dark, still winter. She didn't have her skimpy outfit on then, just a spot in the night, moving. Past the fell building on the coast? What was she doing there? Her documents, man. Hiding something in the water. She had a fag after she'd done it. I was up in the ruins there. She couldn't see me, but I could see her smoking. She was nervous, but not scared. And beautiful. That, too. I see. How could you see what she looked like? You said it was dark. The sun came up. Her hair was like cobwebs. She smoked more fags and snorted a line of whatever shit she was on right there. She needed it just to move. Her passport and ticket to Villiers. <coughs> and from there to Cachet Bru. In the free state of Seminine, hidden away at the edge of the earth, near the pale. After she was gone, did you keep what was in it? Ah. Uh, submersible, it was. No. Why would I do that? I didn't need tickets to Villiers. I put did them Ruby back. take them, perhaps? If I wanted to extort someone, I'd do better. A little inconsistency. He was surprised to hear her name, Clasia, before. Would he not have seen it on the documents? You didn't say Clasia in there. Uh, it was something. Uh, I don't remember. It was dark that morning. I only remember her face on the photo. Why would I need that trash? I'm not going to be here. Yeah? Oh, are you? A strange confusion comes over him from time to time. So I did. She had a face like an archipelago with those birthmarks. And a body hard and lean and bruised all over. Black and yellow. I could see she's taken a beating. To be a woman is some fucking shit, huh? I could see who she was, too. A spook. On the run. Revachal's the cloaker of capital now. All the bag men and arms dealers end up here to do drugs and have sex like animals. You could tell she was a spook? From the documents? She had different color hair on the photo. And glasses. Forged. Some sordid bourgeois affair. I've heard about this kind of thing on the radio. I'm not blind, am I? It quickly comes to you. Oh, yes. Cutting those drugs of hers into little lines with a knife. Bro, <laughs> why is he obsessed with Clasia, though? You've been on the island longer than she's been alive. Everything in him fills with impossible longing all at once. This game is really interesting. It could have been very easy. So you guys have um, let me know that the creators of it are like pretty hardcore, like communist believers. So it could have been very easy for them to make this guy the the last light, the dying light, the hero of, of the left, blah, 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 blah. But um, that's not quite what's happening here, you know? Maybe that's part of his character. But he's, he's equally just like sad old man, arguably a pervert. You know, I mean. Did you make that hole? With a clip point knife. Like that too, yes. Bending like a bow against the glass. I've been through all of Martinez, every nook and cranny. Yes, that too. The things they did in that little room, what she'd do to feel good. Funny the way light works. You turn it on inside and it gets so dark out, you can't see a man looking in. I learned that in the twenties when they were still hunting me. I've seen people do some shit, but... You hear the familiar scribble of the lieutenant's pen. A quick glance at you. One more loose end down. 
We're doing this, detective. How did you get in there? The hidden pinball workshop. I can just walk in there now after a good wash. I told you, they think I'm an antisocial. Have I seen Closing him? Closing hour is a good time. The kitchen's empty. Have I seen him in the whirling? You had to open the steel door in the kitchen? How? I got that open a long time ago. Some bourgeois game merchant lived there. I don't know, 15 years ago? He left spare keys all over, and I took one. Then I saw her turn the light on one night in my scope. There's... There's nothing to hold on to. Only this. It's, it's not enough. Man needs to feel something else. In this fight, it helps if you have your eye on something there. It's weakness, I know. No. I don't really know. I was there one night and she was crying, like a child, in the corner of her room on the floor. Like she does sometimes. <sighs> the undoing of all men. Is this thing they would call love, huh? The day after I killed him. Yes. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. Maybe. I told you. I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here waiting for you. A sudden pang of rage. If you came ten years ago, I would have killed you. In the silence, the lieutenant draws a line in his notes, then nods at you once more. I'd rather let him die than um, drag him to jail, you know? One more down. Her. The lieutenant nods at you in acknowledgement. That's it. Motive. We have it. Hey, boys, you know. <laughs> it's a sickness, eh? Where is she, that classier? I haven't seen her there for days. gone. I knew it. She kept staring into the scope this last week at the island like she knew. She'd look at night crying or smoking on the roof, staring right into me. It doesn't matter. Midtown, across the Bay of Revachol, cold rain falls on 40-story towers. Above them, Lucerne Central Aerodrome. A cocoon suspended in the grey sky by a web of suspension wiring encircled by hybrid aircraft. On the platform, a young woman is withdrawing from amphetamines, barbiturates and alcohol. Yet still, she smiles among the crowd, among the great ghost of the city she's leaving for another, far south. Smaller, distant, hidden. Not like the great chandelier she sees sparkle in the night below her. Street lights, towers, tenements and water. And across it, a dark strip of ruins, barely visible, if she didn't squint her eyes. There, on a dilapidated jetty, in a nameless village, two police officers and one special consultant look across a narrow strip of sea. The ruins of a sea fort stick out of the water, built by Philippe II, reappropriated by the commune, then lost in the landing. He's there, doing what exactly I don't know. Satellite officer Vic Mayer points at the ruins. Behind that anti-aircraft something, that's why we can't see him. Special consultant Heidelstam is optimistic. We'll see the boat when he comes. Let's go get a coffee until then. I know this interesting little place where, as the men go, Patrol Officer Minnow looks back over her shoulder at the crumbling fortification like a rotten tooth rising out of the water. Good luck, Harry, she thinks. You need something good for this. The old man has fallen silent, staring at your feet. The burnt logs in the fire are moist from the sea air.
What? But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues, like an incantation. Your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court in 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... No, I don't want to. I have to stay here. He's not afraid of jail. He's afraid of something else. Like parting from a loved one. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Now on to the boat. Not really. We could escort him to the pier, then either one of us can take him inland while the other stays here, but... But then, who watches him while you're coming back here? You come back for me? How about I go and send a boat back for you? What is this farce? This is a fucking farce. I can't. Lillian, you could ask her maybe. This is no harmless old man. This fucking world. This world. What is this? No, listen. Listen now. No, no. It would take a whole day on this island. You go and transport the prisoner. I'll be. This world. I feel like I should stay on the island. My Are shivers. You talking about. My shivers is, is telling me to stay here. Us. And earlier. I saw a thing, it was a thing, it was a little thought bubble, and it said, the reed is swaying oddly. What color or something like that? Your skin is crawling suddenly. Oh my god, it's huge! delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. I'm like gonna cry. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun hand rise instinctively. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out- Am I crazy? Don't, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Please tell me it's real. I'm not crazy. I need it to be real. Don't do this to me. I can see you. Oh my god. <laughs> Is he lying? Can he really see it? Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. Jed, I really wanted to find it. And I know it's not what the game's talking about, but it's like... <laughs> I feel like I've gone fucking crazy in real life, you know? And it's just... <laughs> I keep trying and I keep pushing for things. <laughs> and I feel like I'm fucking crazy for keeping to try. <laughs> But if it's real, then I'm not crazy. <laughs> but that means it's really there, spinning 
slowly, in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. You're going crazy. stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. A sudden chirrup fills the air. The walking stick moves its whole body, limbs working independently of each other, like the parts of a masterfully constructed machine. It moves just an inch closer to you, or does it only feel like it does? Something in its body language has changed, just slightly. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soak in your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. No reply, a total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The invertebrate stops raising its side-like arms and tilting its tiny head, formed from the fused plates around its mouth. For a second, the effigy is frozen. Then it nudges back into motion with a click. I Tell me what he's like for you. What is your illness? For me, it is not like that. I have states, not the emotions. For example, I experience excitement and unexpected sugar rewards. But that is not the important. Now I will tell you how it is for me. <laughs> for me, it is a series of half-lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon. Transient, deep, moist. Shapes of plants and animals. <sighs> and internal sensations. A swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearm, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an air funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. 
I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. Even when you're sleepy, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute empathy for you. That must be incredibly hard. The orthobots are in silent and meaningless awe of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. But from you, Banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. In honor of your will, Lieutenant Euphrater, that you kept from falling apart in the face of sheer terror, day after day, second by second. Detective, arriving. On the scene. Not even the birds know that. <clears throat> Not even the water lily. You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. Or read. I'm glad I didn't kill myself so that I could get to play Disco Elysium. It's hard for me to articulate. This might seem like... Fuck it, I don't have to explain myself anymore. Whatever. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? You. Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years, I did it out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand. I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insolandia Isoma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, combing myself, unfolding <clears throat> at night to play with trash bins and boys. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Sussurin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Seminese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the city's militia in Rebelshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. No, you are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. No, you are. The more of our encounter is I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness. True, the actually. The volatile nerve system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you, 
Really? No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radial asymmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. The pale is human made. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. It's actually coincides with the arrival of the human mind. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nose mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day? We'll just forget. Please be. Or oh, one day, one of you will close your eyes and sign and open them to see that none of this must ever existed. It doesn't look like that, no. You're just staring at it. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? Sort of. I think we should take the picture, and then you should back away from the unstudied species. Yes. I do not have a star to display, so I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. No, there is one more. Somebody commented this. Somebody commented this? And I thought they were talking about me. And maybe they were. But I think they were letting me know to click this. But... Even without the comment, it's been really kind to me to let me know that I'm not fucking crazy. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are praying to you. The reed creature does not stop its stridulations. It towers above you, parting the reeds it emerged from. Tuft-like structures still rustle on its joints. Perhaps it is preparing to eat its god. Okay. I shouldn't have tried to take the picture. I feel like I, I know that right now. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's really? being aimed by the camera. 
It remains fixated. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. If Lena is dead before I can have this picture, I can never see this picture. I'm finding the, the writer of this game, man. The sweat on your arms feels <laughs> cold as ice, as if you're frozen as well, in the shadow of this great statue of chitinous marble. I got it. For all time. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. It's about to move. You can sense it. A sudden shiver passes the limb. Looks like the creature is awakening. Wave by wave from its stupor. Don't say it. Are you sure? This may be the only chance you get to touch it. The arthropod towers above you. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spot. I'm down to lose like an arm. Of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation is electrifying, resounding through your body. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker like a young vine it's even a bit wet be careful detective it's moving you were right it glistens with some kind of moisture the creature in front of you <laughs> stays frozen it tastes like sugar very faint the anthropod towers above you tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike Odorless, mostly comprised of water. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. And just like that, it's gone, skating away across <clears throat> the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water and something under it in the place it stood bobbing there among the reeds a collection classier of stuff it's gone looks like a nest of some sort we should have a look apparently yes like a water strider only i've never seen any you see kim that's why we don't give up what now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. Motorway south. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild pale yonder. For an unimaginable distance, forgetting, forgetting, until you can no longer remember anything. No cities, no mountains, no oceans, and finally, no vector. Nothing remains. A blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible. 
the motion of a human throat. Swallow in, and then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before, while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamrock. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. Holy shit, the helmet? Classius passport. Alright. Can I wear the helmet? I really like the helmet. Gives you half light? I'm gonna put it on anyway. Holy shit! This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orania, is issued to a black haired woman called Katazina Alazier. Classius hidden documents from the MT boy. It's Clasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Clasius, or whatever her name was. Hiding place, or...? <sighs> Perhaps. But that still doesn't explain how it got into the nest. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it, but to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. And Katarzyna Alazia was supposed to be her real name. Where Clasia comes from, remember? God, I told you she kept lying to you. She's probably lying to someone else right now, in another city. No, she lied to us. Her so-called real name was not her real name. Somehow she has managed to lie to us about that too. I mean, I like Clasia. Lying or not. I don't know. But it's not Katarzyna Alasia, or Klasia, or Anouk Meyer Smith. We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. That's cool. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. <laughs> the winds are silent. The streets are empty of her. She is no longer in the city of Revachon. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. See? Mr. Dross? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. Like an addict of some terrible substance. The plastic cake feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should. I... I lost. He turns his eyes to the reeds again. As he's... He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. This site is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. You've gotten all you will out of this poor bee. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers. And they It'd be great if he's just pretending so we leave him and then we come back and he's fucking gone. Old age and shock. Yes. The arrest and the appearance of the Phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember quite a few things about that health check you did on him makes sense now. 
over a long time he is it said over a long time told you yes good during your long staring match kim don't be annoying you literally just saw the phasmid all right this should validate everything i've been saying to you man um he did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect maybe i have absolutely forgotten to take notes i hope i remember all of this this will be one hell of a report thank god we have the photo we should think about getting back to the mainland to get help he'll be safe here if we don't take too long the skiff is swaying let's we are done here the skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in the ride back is uneventful and quiet but for the sound of conversation on the water there is someone inland waiting for you two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer the sea is calm you reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff look what the tide brought him i want to call you a teapot but i'm honestly kind of impressed no idea where you got all that gear but there's no doubt in my mind that some bad bad people are looking for it also you look like a fucking idiot why am i scared suddenly no but he was nice Oh really? They don't seem bothered by it. That's because you're a cop in the Nexus Skeleton. Actually, are you? Are you still a cop? There's so much disco going on. It's hard to tell. Vic, calm down. Harry, that's because you're a cop with fuck the world, Brit. Yes, that has all. This is not the first time he's seen you all decked out in Wacker. Vic, calm down. Hello. Um, Trent Heilerstein. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicomar, and this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Special consultant Trent Heilerstein, Patrol Officer Judith Mino. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. Come on, man. Ari, we want to help you. Trent, I believe this is where you come in? This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that. But um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trump, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when okay, you Okay, but I solved the case. Stick. So, let's chill. You're a worried vest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even Special Consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries. Instead of working. God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. Yeah, I'm chill now. I'm back down. Yes. You're sorry. You're the sorriest cop who ever lived. Nothing has changed, Harry. I've heard oh. this repentance shit a million times over. Alright, alright. What's the task force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit. 
under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, drawn fucking Heidelstown. I'm technically just- Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Do? It's a major crimes unit. We cleared the desk of cases, so pressing 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. I'm very tense and very anxious. I'm afraid of a firefight. I'm afraid of this all going tits up. The your pussy, or what remains of it, hand-picked, hand-lost. The 41st isn't... Uh... The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. I'm glad I'm not fucking drunk. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Ah, uh, gods below. Fuck, man, let me catch a break. <sighs> okay, I drank so much I lost my memory and now I'm slowly recovering it. I don't think I can say anything to this about this to these people. This was a method I used to solve the case. Uh, fuck it, let's just tell the truth. Psychotraumatic amnesia, Trant. I can go for that. Shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? I keep my shit together. Also, I know a person can't wipe their own mind, however traumatic it gets. That doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. Mm. One was after the two drunks case. The case is in the by in the ledger. That mural. The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea. Yes. Practice. What do you mean? Well, here's my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. I mean, if my mind is empty, I can absorb a lot more about whatever environment I'm in. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed it for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Dude, really I solved the case, Vic. to work in a major crimes unit. Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a Cretan, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Leadership, now. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, he's able to put his clothes on, and you- Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. No, now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Ah, oh, so refreshing. He just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of- It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. Oh, this is a bunch of checks to see if I'm- Alright, here's my badge. You rush to demonstrate your badge. Your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth- Oh, fuck! Please give it to me, Measurehead! Thank you, Measurehead! Not today, badge. And your gun? <sighs> he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. 
I quit drinking, man. I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then, huh? He's wounded. It's been a long week and he's handled an actual corpse. Yeah, I have handled an actual corpse. It's been a bit of a week. I'm sorry I smell bad. Bit of a week? You're drunk and you let a suspect escape. A certain class here. Because We've read the report, Sari. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. Okay. I can't say anything too fucking crazy right now. Gave us a vital clue that led us to the island. Oh, well, if she was nice. I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect. The one who shot herself in the head. Or the fact that you're ever a Claire's little peony now. Doing I compared to the eight people who were gunned down. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his own life. He was shot and survived only because of his armor. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. Also solve the fucking case, man. Detective, it's better if I do that. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> he thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On the case? On me. On Lieutenant Yefretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing, also losing the badge. That's I so didn't cool. drink. Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. I have done a lot of fucking drugs though. See? One week. Then there's the self-flagellation issue. He likes to apologize profusely, making it sound like he's guilty of at least first degree murder. It's not a good communication strategy for an officer. It's... it's worrying, especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which, again, for a police officer, is a little odd. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, and the drugs, of course. Some kind of anti-radiation drug he uses to induce visions. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. You didn't, you didn't have to tell him all that, Kim. You, you really... <laughs> you color, Kim. You ain't, you ain't had to include all that, that. That last part, man. It was going good. You didn't have to include that. He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. And he solved it. Near perfectly. In one week, we have a confession, a murder weapon, and the, and perpetrator. the perpetrator. Locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. So hop off, bro. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A new species? Please just show them the photo. A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It. Uh, They're gonna think he's crazy. Can you just pull out the photo, man. I think we. He takes out Thank the you. photo and shows it to the officers across the yard. Thick white snow falls all around you. Flakes stick to the glossy photo of the phasmid. In conclusion, I'm him. Please leave me alone. I'm getting sober. I'm getting sober. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. I'm gonna say nothing. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? Detective? Yes. The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence. Exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia, he fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected? Yes. I must say, this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Okay, hop off. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness.
We also have strong motive motive for the men. Lilianovich. A revolutionary matronym. Now, the custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lilian, his Lilian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachov. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. I think... He... he... It's not enough for it to just be an act of jealousy, because that's just silly. And I don't think that's all it was. I think if it started the war, that would lean into what color his political ideology is a bit more savvy. And it worked. He got a war going. Yes, until we stopped it. He saw the mercenary as an enemy combatant. There's plenty for prosecution to pick from, as far as motif is concerned. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. It's a clean win, man, so... It's way more than that. I'm not completely satisfied with it. Get over yourself. You're not a perfectionist. You're a cop and you did a good job. With a lot of help from Lieutenant Kitsuragi. And none of this can hide the smell of booze on the wind. It's not me. God damn it. Doesn't it ever leave? It is there. The drunks right. are right there. In your bones or something. It will pass in time. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and the family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, Detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called ah. It must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's a male or female. The bat That makes sense. Yeah. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to- Yes, but also red colored beige and brown, a little green. On the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it's incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers this would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Okay. Absolutely. This is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it. You're doing good here. Perhaps only quit while you're ahead? Or no? Yeah. Yeah. I don't... The nightclub? I could see the nightclub spun into... Yeah. I don't want to, but you discovered the new species and solved the murder. So I have to, Jude. Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. You haven't been drinking, she thinks. So, maybe this time. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. 
We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. I could see the nightclub spun into like a blah blah blah, good for the revitalizing whatever, but it could also be spun as wasting time. Um, even now, though it's like really. Now you will finally get the man looks west jingle in his car keys in his pocket. I do need to tell Lena about this ASAP. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in J Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Fine. If we She and her husband were con they should know as soon as possible. She is going to be watch out or she'll faint. Okay. Kim, what are you gonna do? Well, First, I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Distant traffic. A scrap of newspaper drifts by, carried by the wind. Yeah, come over to us, Talk man. Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two Come work with me! With my doom -mongering. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Would fit him? I'm crazy enough. Flattered? Juliet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But... I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more sensitive. Stay with me, Kim. And we also have a huge caseload, Lutnor. Pa I do like the sound of that. Recruit Kim, we got him. We got him. I just got this. I just got that. Hey, why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. Yeah, fair enough. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Was her name Dora? Yeah, Dora England, I think. Not Dora. What? Something like that. Half Vasa. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. God, I don't know. Six years ago, she was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it. What the hell is wrong with you? Hey man, how many years has it been for me? One year? It's been one year. One year ain't bad, right? Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and the Rangelon really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. <laughs> hey, man. I know how to pick them, I guess. I don't know, man. Beautiful women love me. I don't know why. They love to fucking shred me to bits and pieces too, hey. Figures. Extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Wavyish. Like a Welkin, basically. <laughs> Snow Welkin. Blonde Welkin. Heartbreak Welkin. Pain Welkin. I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Every time I see Hangul, the Korean alphabet, I have a fucking heart attack now. I'm telling you, boys. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go. I think she talked to the Academy de Dao, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class cheek or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Who Good am time. I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. Well, obviously you're not I a gym used teacher to be. anymore, but... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... Harry! It explains everything. The bicep the girth! Are, the, drinking, <laughs> the bicep girth. Your inexplicable facial hair. 
The collection of Fallon sportswear I've amassed. Retro style dance music. And how you're able to perform with it? Three hundred and sixty degree spin kick. The raw, robust stamina output. Raw, robust stamina output. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. Why did I join the RCM? You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. Every time I find a new wife, I, I go get a better job. I want to be a better guy. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you, bullshit. Every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Right. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like <laughs> I'm a fucking unit, man. Teacher. Good. Right. Fuck it, let's go. Trump brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. The great district hums in the slowly falling snow. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, and chimney stacks. Fire traps as far as the eye can see. From Main Street to Precinct 41, to Boogie Street, forking into the white horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint Jerome, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Lickmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scott Lee looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Ptolemy Price gestures. I love this name, Ptolemy. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the- Oh, we're Minister. cooking up a new revolution. He returns to the list. Minna, of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? All right, Kim, come on now. Dude, I'm so glad I took the time to find the badge and the gun and not drink because I would have been fucked. I would have been utterly cooked, man. If I didn't have any of that stuff, I didn't do all the things, you know? Damn. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the time and just like watch videos and read through the wiki about everything I missed because I know I missed a billion things. But uh, yeah, I'm never going to play this game again. I'm never doing this again. Ten out of ten game. Never going to play this shit again. Thank you so much, Robert Kurvitz. This is unreal. Yeah, somebody told me that I didn't do the church quest line. So my bad for that. What are my thoughts on Disco Elysium? I'm gonna let the credits play out because I think that's important. Um... Yeah, I don't think it'd be ridiculous to say that this is the best video game I've ever played. It's one of what color? It's one of the best um, pieces of media, of art that I've ever consumed. Um, 
everything impressed me for the most part. The, the music, the writing, the art, of course. The gameplay I had some qualms with. There wasn't a lot of active, active gameplay. It was a lot of um, point and click and checks, but if I'm being honest, I'm really not like a, like a reflex gamer. But it, it might have been nice if there were some, some more things where it was like, uh, if there's some mechanics that you had to get better at. So like, for example, when I play games with QTEs and I learn the patterns, over time I get better. So I think I would have enjoyed being able to feel like I was actively progressing beyond just like number go up. But that's probably my only critique of um, I'm looking for the voice of Love Love Show. <laughs> that was probably my only critique of the game is that I feel like my gameplay wasn't active, active. Um, but yeah, no. People told me that this game, they feel like this game like healed them and changed them a lot. Um, and I and I had a hard time like understanding how that could be. And part of me was like, oh, they just haven't been in the fucking shit. They haven't been in hell as long as I have or to the degree that I have, blah, 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 you know. Um, but that last bit with um, just like knowing, cause I got really scared when it showed up because when I was making the character, at the beginning of the game, it said, like, may lose his mind. And I thought, like, that's her name, Lina Rocio, La Revacherie. I thought, like, oh, it's it's finally happened. Like, I finally, he finally lost his mind, and I, and I am crazy. Because, like, I would check the traps every episode because I was desperate to find it. Like, I wanted to believe in something. Like, I wanted to believe. You know? I wanted to believe that there's still some magic in the world that... Even if everybody else says you're crazy, as long as you keep going, there's some sort of reward. What color? And I'm projecting a lot onto that, but like... Like, I actually am crazy, you know? Like, I actually have the voices and everything, like... I actually am crazy. So, I wouldn't have been surprised if it turned out Harry was, was just... I mean, I'm sure he's also just crazy, but at least not about the Phasmid, you know what I mean? Just like... Choosing to believe in something and then following it through. Despite everybody telling you to like fuck off, despite even the people who initially like introduced you to the idea like giving up effectively. Don't show me the Korean name, man. Come on, don't do this to me. Wouldn't it be really funny if somebody here had the same name as my as my uh as my ex? Wouldn't that be nice? Um I will actually fucking lose my mind if somebody in here has the same name as my ex. This is close. This is close. Alright, looks like we're fine. Um, but yeah. No, no. It's one win. And that's all I've been asking for. I've just been asking for one fucking win because it's been a couple of years of just like getting shat on. It's been a couple of years of just taking fucking L after L and just getting shat on and still waking up and still crying anyway. So, even if it's in a video game, it's nice to get one, we'll call it one win. I hope I can get that one win in real life too, you know? Just one win. Just let me get that one, you know? But that was just Elysium. Amazing game and uh, an amazing community behind it. You guys have. Uh, it's uh, getting to do this and, and having all of you guys interact and, and getting to meet all of you guys. Um, I'll try to have the Outer Wilds up um, within this week. I need to get my hands on a copy of the game. I just paid my rent with the last of my savings. I am broke! <laughs> I have no money. I think I got $2 right now, so. I'm gonna have to do something to get my hands on Outer Wilds, but uh, I will do that. Uh, anyway, 
Thank you for watching up until this point. Thank you for sticking with me through the end. That's not something people tend to do. So, as I like to say, guys, in the end of every video, stream, project, whatever, take care of yourselves and each other. Skid fast when you can. Take a break when you need to. And remember, if you ever get tired out there, you can always come right back home here to the Chat Monkey Hideout. See you guys soon. Okay. Hopefully, we've left you with some good memories. So, until we meet again, stay gold.